Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and in my channel I talk about plants and my life and journey with my plants. I don't know how many of you noticed but I didn't do an, a Sunday upload the last week because Sunday was actually my birthday. Um, I turned 40 uh, yes, two days ago. Yeah, and um, Jordan had um, gotten um, some food catered. Uh, the caterer who did our wedding food um, she's this really amazing uh, vegan chef. She owns a vegan pudding um, store in downtown Vancouver. So she catered for our wedding and we really, really loved her food. And then I had mentioned before to him that I would really like to have her food again. So Jordan um, got her to cater for my 40th birthday and then he invited my family over and my best friend and her family. So it was a really, um, really like easygoing and fun time. Uh, super relaxing and Wolfie wrote me a birthday card and this is the first year that I feel like I could really feel like Wolfie wants to make it really special for me he just gave me lots of kisses and throughout the day just happy birthday mama just really wanting to make the day special for me which is just really sweet um, yeah so that's what I did on the weekend uh, a little bit out of breath because I just had to run downstairs to change his um, TV show for him uh, for those of you who don't know, Wolfie is my four-year-old son. He's turning five in October. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm doing something a little, just a little bit different than my usual routine. Usually I do like the top 10 Hoya of the month first, and then I do my top 10 favorite plants of the month. Um, but because I feel like I have had done a lot of like Hoya content um, this month, so I just feel like uh, talking about my other plants today instead of highlighting my top 10 favorite Hoyas, but I will do my top 10 favorite Hoyas maybe like next week or this week. Um, anyways, I'll, I'll get that done. Uh, but today I'm just wanna highlight the top 10 favorite plants of this month. Plants that are making me really happy, the plants that I find that I really gravitate towards. Um, they're really doing really well and very gorgeous this month. I brought seven here with me and there are three that I have to bring the camera to like different locations of my house to show you. One is because it started kind of shingling on the wall and I know it's not good for the wall, but I really like how it looks. So I don't want to pull it off and I'm just leaving it there. So we have to go see the plant, like where it's situated. And one is in my exoterra for the um, begonias. And then another one is I think in my exoterra, in the, not exoterra, in my like big terrarium um, setting. So let's just get looking at the plants. Uh, which one should I grab? Actually, let me just grab this one first that's sitting right in front of me. This is my Monstera um, Obliqua Peruvian form. I actually just had to move this out of the terrarium um, yesterday and to put it, I'm putting it back into the grow tent um, on the bottom uh, underneath like a lot of other plants so it doesn't get a lot of direct light. I debated this for a really long time because it was growing quite well in the terrarium but oftentimes because I don't have like enough airflow in a terrarium and I don't want to plug in so many things so I don't have a fan in there, um, I think it just ends up being too wet and some of the fenestration sometimes it just like breaks off. Can you see there? And um, the newest leaf that's emerging um, has like a really t big tear already with one of the fenestrations. So, yeah, I just feel like, uh, what's up, Baba? Um, I don't want go either. You want to change another one? Okay, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, so I was noticing like the new leaf is coming in and the wetness in the terrarium is already kind of damaging the leaves. So I decided I'll just pull it out and um, enjoy it as like a potted plant instead of the terrarium and to be honest with you i feel like my terrarium is growing like starting to feel a little bit overgrown and so it was harder for me to see this plant's like individual beauty but i really really love this plant i pay so much money for this plant and now it's so much more like less expensive but i don't have any regrets i still am really really happy to 
to have this plant. I just think it's very, very gorgeous. And yeah, I hope it grows better now that it's not um, in like a super wet and la no, lack of airflow environment. There it is. The second plant that I also pulled from the um, grow tent to show you guys is my um, Philodendron Florida Beauty. And you guys have seen this plant so many times um, on this list. I love this plant so much. I think the variegation is so stunning. Um, but previously it strung out this all green leaf for me. And then, so I was really worried thinking that it has reverted. Um, I wasn't sure if it's gonna continue to throw out variegated leaves, but the very next leaf that it's put out and it's still hardening is another really beautiful variegated leaf. So I don't think I'm completely out of the woods yet. I will have to see how the next leaf is doing, but at least I know that it's not like just decided to revert back. It just threw out like a full green leaf. Um, yeah, and I need to uh, extend its <laughs> its uh, pole. Look at this. It's like growing outside of the pole and like trying to get back inside. And there are these two aerial roots just right here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I should like chop this plant now to start a second plant, but because it's constantly working on a new leaf, it's really hard to uh, make that decision. But the aerial roots are so uh, long and healthy, I feel like I'm able to, and maybe I could have a fuller plant. Um, yeah, maybe just chop it right where it reverted. Like by this, right, right underneath here. I don't know, I'll see. Or just extend the pole. I don't know, what do you guys think? Leave it in the comment, let me know what you think. Should I leave it and like extend the pole or should I take a cutting and have a fuller pot? Regardless, this is such an amazing, beautiful plant. And uh, yeah, when I first got it, the leaf was just like these teeny tiny baby, baby leaves. And now it has matured so much. There you go. So yeah, this is definitely one of my all time favorites. Put it right here so you guys can keep seeing it. Can you see it? All right. And then the third one I want to highlight is just this like orchid that I got from Save On Foods. Um, and I have, I have highlighted it before when uh, just this one flower stem has bloomed. And then this flower stem was like full of buds. And now this flower stem has like all the, most of the buds have bloomed. And I have just been loving this so, so much. I actually use this uh, orchid to frame my birthday menu. I'll, I'll insert a photo here to show you guys. And I just thought it just, it just it looks so pretty. Yeah, um, since it started blooming, I have uh, been putting it on my dining table to um, just enjoy the beauty um, on the dining table. I, this is what I, I think, I don't know if it's true or not. Just like once it's bloomed, um, I don't need to give it so much light. Uh, I actually think too much light may make it wilt a little bit faster. I don't know. And these two flowers are already on the way out, but they've been um, blooming for quite a while now. Yeah, I just, I love this. And I love these, um, the color of the flowers. They look like, almost like paper flowers to me. Just super elegant. Really love this orchid. I'm always on the lookout when I'm at like grocery stores for like, um, unique looking or it's just like um, orchid flowers, like the, the colors that I really like. I like to bring them home and um, even if they, uh, the flowers drop, when they do decide to rebloom, it's just such a good feeling. Yeah. There you go. All right, and then the next plant I want to highlight here is uh, my Philodendron plowmanii. I have such a love-hate relationship with this plant. It um, is really super prone to thrips. I feel like right now I'm not finding any, but that's like once in, like, it just continues to come back. I find that because of the 
the leaves uh, has these, what a, what's this texture called? Um, pleated maybe? It's really easy for thrips to lay eggs in there. I, I find that they really prefer this plant. So like, see like this leaf is damaged and it's really like wonky and weird looking. And so is this one, but when they have this the new leaf come out and it's not damaged, it's just like so, so gorgeous. I, I, I love it so much. And not to mention the really, really cool roughly patios they, they have. It's almost like a sea creature. Yeah. So right now, the, these two leaves are looking really handsome, even though I feel like this one also looks like has a little bit of thrip damage, like right here. And the leaf looks a little bit weird, but they look really, really handsome right now. And I'm just like um, really enjoying looking at them. This is sitting on top of my Ratsta terrarium downstairs and it's just living in regular room um, humidity and temperature. Um, but the substrate that I have it in is this like uh, potting soil that I got from just like a random garden store and they recommended me to get this for indoor plants but it dries up so quickly. So I'm finding that I have to water this plant more than I have to water other plants. There you go. So on top of the Ratsta terrarium, um, I brought actually four plants that are sitting there because I've been really enjoying them um, lately. The second one that's sitting like right next to the Plowmanii is this um, Gloriosum. I had to use um, a bamboo stick to hold it up just because it's a little bit like wonky. This, um, this self-watering pot is really shallow. So yeah, I, I'm not um, liking it too much, but this new leaf is so beautiful. And the previous leaf, I already enjoyed it like very much. It's really, really gorgeous. Um, I imported this from, I believe it was Equa Genera. Um, maybe last, was it? Yeah, maybe last year. And it was like, um, the, the oldest leaves are dying, but they were just like these small, um, small leaves. And um, yeah, they seem to be relatively happy. They have been putting out bigger and bigger leaves. And this, I feel like this newest leaf is just like the perfect heart shape, the perfect venation. And it's super velvety, it's just so beautiful. This is such a mess, it's so wonky. Yeah, I'm not really able to put the, secure the trellis um, very well. Maybe I need to repot this. But yeah, I love it. So beautiful. Gloriosum, I think, is just such an amazing plant. It's so easy going. Like, I have never grown this inside of the grow tin. Maybe I did for a few months but it's mostly growing in just regular home environment, regular humidity, and over the winter time, it was really cold in my house. It was continuing to just do fine, and yeah, it just is super fuss-free. But you know, again, this is a plant that thrips really enjoy, and and this one has been attacked before too. I, you just, I just have to stay on top of cleaning it, and I, I have like the beneficial mites um, in every pot at the moment. Yeah, one last time. <laughs> Super wonky. All right, <clears throat> so that's that one. And then the next one I want to highlight is um, my Anthurium retarifolium. This plant, again, look at this. This is um, one of the newest leaves. It is so, so long, and I was so upset when uh, it was damaged. This one is just sitting downstairs and like next to this, like our day bed. And I think Wolfie was just like watching his show on a day bed and he kept, I don't know, grabbing it or pushing it back and then it just like damaged the leaf. Otherwise, look, it's just, it's so, so long. Maybe this one I should uh, think about mounting it on the wall and letting it hang because um, 
it's just uh, full of drama. And it has uh, been flowering quite a bit too. These are just the old like flower um, stems that I could probably cut off now. <clears throat> and then right now it's working on a new leaf. It's right here. Yeah, I really need to make sure that it doesn't get damaged this time. Yeah, because it's just, it's just so beautiful when it's like, um, perfect. It's just like, has this beautiful sheen to it and it's so handsome. Yeah, I, I'm still so mad whenever I look at <laughs> the, this damaged. Yeah. Yeah, and again, this is just sitting on top of the Rusta um, terrarium. It doesn't need extra humidity. I just, and I also like quite oftentimes forget to water it and, um, it looks like it's just in like a chunky soil mixture. It's really quite root bound at the moment, but it's just so low uh, maintenance and fuss free. It just is really um, super nice and easy going. Super beautiful. And then the last plant that I brought here to show you guys and it's also a plant that sits on top of the Rasta terrarium. Maybe like I'll show you guys a picture of like what they look like um, when they're all sitting on there. But this plant, I want to photograph it so much to share on Instagram, but it's just, it's just um, so big that it's, at the moment I find it impossible to photograph now. Um, so I, I'll just show, share it with you guys here in front of the camera. Oh, and also I potted it in this like super heavy pot. And this plant is my philodendron, my, my yoi or my yoi eye. <laughs> I have, um, this plant started off as a uh, one or two leaf cutting. And then my friend Shannon imported a plant for me of this. And it was like maybe, I don't know, also a three leaf uh plant and i potted them together so there are two plants in here and it has just been growing so well and uh, for the first like year and a half it was really like pest free and very very easy but i have now grouped them with like my other philodendrons so it has been attacked by thrips um i don't know if you can see but like one of the newer leaves is um has some damage to it. This is also another new leaf. Look how huge it is. I love, I love this plant. And the way it unfurls, it's just like a tube. And then like each little arm just kind of like comes out. Yeah. And uh, I just grow this in like a chunky aeroid mixture with lots of cocoa husk chips and some potting soil yeah and again i find this one to be just really like easy going once it's established itself um in the beginning when it was still like a younger plant the new leaves will like not successfully unfurl and i'll lose like um a section uh, or it'll tear itself off when it's like unfurling but now it just unfurls without much assistance at all um, and without added humidity. I think, yeah, I don't even, I don't even like make it a point to spray it when, when it's unfurling. I kind of forget about it and it just does its own thing. Here you go. I love this plant so much. It's so pretty. Okay. Oh, but it's so heavy. Yeah, I have run out of pots, so sometimes I just like, take whatever, when I'm up potting, I just take whatever I have on hand. And that one definitely, it doesn't have any drainage, um, but I'm, I'm not worried. This plant, I find that the roots are just so, so resilient. It's really hard unless you're like, like soaking it in water constantly. It's not going to have root rot. I just, yeah, it's just such a easy going plant. Okay, so those are all the plants that I brought here to show you guys. And now we'll go look at the plants that I also want to highlight. Um, that are harder to like bring here. Okay, let's go. 
I've been meaning to highlight my Skin Dapses Exotica for you guys um, for a really long time now. It has just grown into such a big, beautiful plant and it's just trailing down. We're on the staircase right now. Like this is the staircase and it's just trailing down and there's no added light. There is a skylight up there. So this is the only light it's been getting. Um, and during the summer, it gets some direct light hitting the leaves in the afternoon. But I think uh, it's been really happy about that. But yeah, it's just such a big, beautiful trailing plant. And uh, hold on. This is what I was telling you guys. It's like shingling on the side of the wall. And I freaking love this. It looks so cute. Yeah, I wanted to continue to do that. So that's why I'm not uh, taking the plan off of the where it's at to show you guys. Skin Dapsis Exotica just grows these like ginormous leaves. It is one of the most satisfying I find trailing plants to um, to own. Uh, I do find that because it has grown so well. I need to water it like quite often. Maybe it's time to repot it, but because I don't want to mess up its situation, it's gonna be a little bit tricky for me to repot. I may have to just grab a bigger pot and then just like take the whole thing out and put it in, like repot it in the spot. I just, yeah, I really love this plant. Right next to it is like another skin dapsis that I, I really adore, but yeah, sorry. I'll just show you guys a little bit. Uh, I, I can never remember the name of this one. Silver Flash or Painted Splash or something like that. I, I love it too. But yeah, today is, uh, I've been really, really loving this one and wanting to highlight it for you guys. All right, so now we're in my Begonia Terrarium, which you guys know I love so much. <laughs> um, and one of the plants that are really, really capturing my eyes this month is this guy. This new leaf is just like, this is one of the older leaves and this is a new leaf that's unfurled in here since I have actually planted a whole thing inside the terrarium and it is just so pink, so bright. I'm looking at it on the camera and it's definitely not as bright as and like amazing fuchsia as it is in like regular life, but, but I don't know. I hope you guys can get the idea of it. It's just so beautiful. There is. There's another one that down, um, my last plant is in the downstairs terrarium, but I kind of also want to highlight this guy for you. Like this begonia that um, Amanda propagated from this leaf has like started to grow uh, really well. And then look at this newest. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I feel like this one is going to be a really, really beautiful begonia. There you go, but okay, let's go downstairs. Okay, so this is what I mean. Like I'm grouping a lot of my aeroids and philodendrons um, up on top of this like Ratsta terrarium. And I also really love that, uh, how I mounted the, um, the stat horn fern on like a serving board. But because I'm grouping all these philodendrons together like this, it's really easy for like whatever pest to kind of just go from one to another. I just need to really stay on top of monitoring and like wiping them. Anyways, guys, so like the last plant I want to highlight in here, actually maybe there are two I kind of want to show you guys. Um, the first one is this Florida, Philodendron Florida Ghost. It's super close to the grow light, so it's just been putting out this white leaves and they seem to be just doing okay and not, not dying off. And another new leaf is emerging. I just thought this looks super cool. I have some weeds in here that I'm just letting it grow. <laughs> but yeah, what I wanted to highlight in here is actually this um, philodendron um, heteraceum variegated. I just think uh, it's been growing really slowly in here because it doesn't get a lot of light. After I show you guys this plant, I'm actually gonna move it to the spot where the uh, Monstera obliqua Peruvian used to be for it to get a little bit more life and light um, but I really love the way it looks in here I just think 
It's really, really like a bundle of prettiness in here. And it is working on a new leaf, but it's really slow. So I'm just going to like kind of gently tug, tug on it to get it out and then use some um, um, metal wiring to like anchor it into a different spot. But isn't that so pretty? Yeah, my terrarium is just getting, look how overgrown the front is. This thing is just growing like a weed in here. Yeah. Anyways. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and these plants that I, I uh, that are really special for me this month. Um, let me know in the comments below which one you really enjoy or um, which one you also like, you also grow in your home. Um, I will see you guys next time. Uh, have a good week. Bye.